The city of Afyun, which name is also given to the delicate red poppy flower in Turkish, is located on the historical King's Road and is truly a cultural heritage with its natural and historical riches. And the gateway to this heritage is the Afyun train station. The significance of Afyun stems from its location at the crossroads of railways running from the north to the south as well as from the west to the east. Afyon is at the meeting point of all trains coming from Istanbul and Ankara via Eskisher, as well as the trains going to Izmir, Konya and Adana. We shall often be encountering the images of old trains that have been long abandoned to loneliness during our travel along the Hejaz line. These old images stand out like puzzles on the King's Road which will eventually lead us to Hejaz. The locomotives that have been left out of use remind us of elephants awaiting death in an elephant cemetery. Just as elephants, instinctively feeling the approaching death, go to elephant cemeteries, like their ancestors before them, to lie and wait for death. These horses of fire lie waiting at the Afyon train station. It is a city that has been attacked, invaded, and plundered throughout history finally passed on to the hands of its true owners once again on the 27th of August 1922. Today it is August the 27th once more, and the happiness of the past 76 years is reflected on all the faces around us. The Mehta, the band of musicians of the Ottoman palace, is playing, and one hears rejoice in the tune. Here the people so old and so brave once again celebrate the glory of that everlasting victory. This vast grey bulk that wears the ramparts as a crown stands in the middle of the city, observing everything like a proud and victorious king. The castle fortifications, which are 226 meters high, have witnessed the rise and the fall of many civilizations since 1350 BC. As the turtle slowly ascends the hill towards the castle, Afion rises towards the future at breakneck speed. The old town quarters with narrow streets and houses that have sun-dried brick walls are clustered around the castle. It is known that the houses and the surroundings of the castle were built in these high hills in order to ensure protection against the enemy. This is the Great Mosque Olochami, the most important relic in the city dating back to the Seljuks. The mosque is situated on the southwest slope of the castle and has a rectangular plan. It has thick rubble stone walls and the roof, which is made of clay, rests on 40 wooden columns decorated with overlapping crosshairs. This mosque is one of the most beautiful examples of the wooden mosques in Anatolia and all of its columns, arcs, and column heads are adorned with exquisite calligraphy. The double-leveled pulpit doors, which are embellished in Seljuk-style decorations, were made in 1272. The Turkish delight candy of Afyun called Lukum is world famous. Lukum is made with clotted cream and it is a speciality of the region. It is also associated with the railroad. It is believed that the first Lukum was made by candy maker Saleh Shikr in 1901 on the occasion of the beginning of the train traffic connecting the city with the rest of the country. This famous Lukum is prepared with the milk of the water buffalo in different flavors with pistachio nuts, hazelnuts, and almonds. When you come to Afyun from Izmir, you see an old station called Afyun City. 
This is the last stop in central Anatolia of the French-built train line connecting Izmir to Afyon. Everything is just as it was in 1895. The employees are aware that they are working in a historical setting and act as if they are afraid to wake up the history from its sleep. We are now in front of an old ticketing machine. Just like a clock that does not work anymore, but it looks as though it will start telling the story of the past if you just touch it. And the signaling lamp. In Turkey, every single train station is like a museum of its own. As the railroad travels through the past, towards the future in this historical setting, we pursue our trip to the past. These remnants of Devan Pasha dating back to the Furians are believed to be grave decorations formed like snake heads. The lion figures are built symmetrically so as to protect the entrance of the grave. We are now passing through a small village, Ayazini. The village, which is filled with antique remains, has a lively atmosphere today as well as it had in the past. Wherever you look, there are houses, wells, caves, and carved stone graves dating back to the Ferians. When you turn towards the north of Ayazini, you will see a large rock formation that looks like a castle. This rock has been carefully carved as a temple, having numerous rooms like the stories of a modern building. It is not certain how much of the history these rocks resembling sponges are able to reflect today. Afyon, being at the crossroads of all civilizations from the Hittites until today, is one of the earliest centers of habitation in Anatolia with its historical past, its castle fortifications, historical relics, hot springs, nourishing mineral waters, poppies, and clean Turkish delight. When you look at this antique city from the opposite hill, you can see the silhu of the history in the shadow of the fading sun. Now we shall be leaving Afyon and travel through Turkey's widest plain. The conductor in Afyon's central train station signals that it is time to go. Please take your seats as we are getting closer to the heart of Anatolia. Kindly take your seats and be ready to travel through this meadow, which resembles a vast ocean. It is necessary to enter the meadow of the soul, as there is no solace in the meadow of the world, says Maulana, as we speed along the steel rails to his rose garden that flourishes in the heart. This meadow is not only the meadow of Konya with 4,000 square meters, but the meadow of the heart of Maulana as well. We pass to the mechanic's cabin where we learn that the sugar we put into our tea, which we have grown so accustomed to drinking on this train, is produced from the beet sugar grown in this area. The German researcher and writer Frederick Saar wrote during his visit to Konya and its surroundings in the summer of 1895. On June 19th, the main road from Kutaya and Afyon Karisar took us to Chai, literally meaning tea, a small town in the midst of vineyards and orchards with a small lively square. Here, one could see people of a variety of different races and tribes from all over Anatolia. 
we met a German gentleman who introduced himself as an engineer of the Anatolian railroads and invited us to join his friends. Then we went over to a place where several other engineers working for the railroad were stationed and had some conversation with them. We were told that the railroad would soon reach Afyon Karahisar and extend to Konya within the next one and a half years as planned. As railroad work was going on in several different locations at the same time, we encountered several similar colonies during our trip from Chai to Konya. The introduction of the railroad to Konya and its meadow on July 28, 1896 brought dynamism to the economy. The production of cereal grains increased and the agricultural products could be sold at better prices. This period marks the time that a stream from Bishir Lake was used in supplying water to the Konya meadow. According to the agreement signed on November 27, 1907, the Anatolian Railroad Company was going to transport the water from the Bishir Lake with a 200 kilometers long channel to supply water for some land good for sowing. Karaviran Lake was going to be dried out in order to be converted to sowing land as well. The Anatolian Railroad Company established the Konya Meadow Watering Company with a partnership of Philip Holtzman firm. The company headquarters was in Frankfurt and 200,000 Deutsche Marks out of the total capital of 500,000 Deutsche Marks belonged to the Anatolian Railroad Company. The operation of supplying water to the Konya Meadow was completed with success within a short period of six years at the end of 1913. On the road to Hijaz, Konya is by far the most significant station, as the Konya train station meets the passengers of the Hard to Mavlana from all over the world. Come, let us know each other's worth and let us not part abruptly. If a friend is the mirror of a friend, then why do we turn away from our mirrors? A cry hangs in the skies of Konya, a cry that is frequently renewed. Come, come whatever you may be, come. Come even though you are an infidel, a pagan or a fire worshipper. Our order is not an order of disconsolation. Come even if you have broken your repentance a thousand times before. In response to the rejoicing call of the Sultan of Hearts, we head towards Kofitel Hadra, which means the Green Dome. Kofitel Hadra is the mausoleum of Maulana, the symbol of Tanya. This Green Dome is the source of light of this meadow, which lies like a calm sea. The blue from the Central Asia meets here with the green hues of Maulana and turns to turquoise and rises to the sky from the middle of the steppe like a prayer, like a ray of hope. The value of a person is what he's looking for, says Maulana. The important thing is to know what to search for. It is not only a journey, the roads that extend to Hijaz. This meadow of hearts that stretches without an end and without boundary bears the road that will eventually end in its core. The road that extends to Hijaz is in the core of the meadow. Turkey opens up to Konya from its four different corners, just as Konya opens up to Mavlana's content. When you reach Konya, you go past the Karatay Theological School, the Mosque of Allah ad -Din, 
and the theological school with the narrow minaret to which the Mablana convent. This is the most important building of the Molawi sect. Historical sources state that this place used to be a rose garden belonging to King Alaeddin Kekubad and was given to Mawlana's father, Baha'eddin Will, as a present. He was eventually buried here in 1231. The founding of the convent started with Mawlana's burial beside his father in 1273. The silence that surrounds the convent is filled with the sound of Nay the Molawi flute. The language spoken here is silence. It is a journey to the depths of the soul. The sound of Nay is like a prayer, cleanses the soul from rust and dirt. The soul cleansing extends all the way to Hijaz. Molana sends out lights of hope to the whole world through the Mesnavi, his lyrical poetry which is full of love. Semahna is the place where prayers are recited. Matbakh Sharif is the kitchen of the Mawlavi convent. This is the place where the food is cooked as well as the place of education and obedience. A person who enters the convent spends the period of 1001 days, a period of severe ordeal prior to becoming a dervish or a Mawlavi believer who once has renounced the world in this kitchen. The hall is the most important and holiest part of the convent. The dervishes congregate here every morning for their early prayers. This is the place where they abandon their identities in order to unite with the real being. The 17th of December is the anniversary of the date that Saint Mavlana walked to God. He describes this walk as a wedding night. The Shepi Eruz ceremonies celebrated every year in Konya are nubital night descriptions. Every year, Saint Mawlana meets with his followers from all over the world. The people congregate as moths fly to the light to fill his convent and his heart. Konya opens its arms and welcomes visitors from around the world. The rites of the Mawlavi dervishes are a perfect composition of art and belief, of virtue and beauty, of submission and modesty. The Mawlavi dervish gives this composition art, aesthetics and worship at the same time. The movements of a Mawlavi dervish during the summer, which is the whirling dance of the dervishes, is full of meaning and is conducted under a code of obedience. The salute they give to each other and to all their loved ones carries the refinement of the Mawlavi sect. In accordance with their belief, we take from God and we give to God. One hand is open, facing up, and the other faces the ground. The headdress, the blouse, and the skirt are very simple in style. The simplicity forms an assertive combination with the eyes closed in submission and the head resting on the right shoulder, save for the beating of the small treble drum, which serves as the only connection with the present world, the dervish can almost ascend to the sky during the dance. And the green dome, like a stream of hope, offers to the whole mankind the tolerance, refinement, and love of living of Islam and of Saint Mavlana. God, if your mercy is to be attained by the good only, then where could the sinners take shelter? O great Lord, if you only accept the good, then to whom should the guilty beg and implore? Konya is a city of conjugal union that unites the sun and Mavlana, love and the art, the substance and meaning, the traditional and the future, in short, yesterday with today. It is a city of the sun and the water, a city of science and of culture, a city of Seljuk art. This is the fresh breath of the steppe, the core of Anatolia. Konya, 
the land of love. The city history of culture, city of art, city of belief, the city of Mavlana, this is Konya. The Museum of Izzat Koyin Luglu is a private museum and library founded through the personal efforts of Izzat Koyin Luglu. The museum, which is richer than many state museums, houses archaeological remains found in the surroundings of Konya. The building, which first housed the museum and the library, was donated to the city of Konya in 1973 by Izzat Koyin Luglu, an inspector of the Turkish State Railway. Today, the museum is housed in its new modern building built by the municipality and accommodates rich collection of the archaeological works as well as many remnants and handwritten books from the time of the Seljuks, Ottomans, as well as relics from various other regions in Anatolia. The donated building is maintained in its original form and decoration as an antique Konya house to be visited by future generations. When you leave the station inspector's house, you become a guest among hundreds of others. The history of these cheerful children dates back to 8,000 years. On their faces, a hopeful smile for the future. This is the hill of Alaeddin, which houses a history of over 4,000 years. The hill, which used to be a place of habitation in the old times and surrounded with a wall, is actually the center of today's Konya. On its north stands the Mosque of Alaeddin, which took 60 years to build and was completed during the reign of Alaeddin Kaykubat in 1221. This mosque is the oldest example of the multi-columned mosques in Anatolia, and its roof is held upright by 62 stone and marble columns. The mosque had been through repairs numerous times, its dome is adorned with exceptional Seljuk tiles. The pulpit, which was decorated and garnished by Mickey from the town of Ahlat, is carved from one piece of ebony wood and is an exceptional piece of Seljuk art of carving wood. The narrow minaret of the mosque school, built by one of the Soviet ministers, Sahib Ali Fahreddin Atta in 1260, is still standing in spite of many past earthquakes. The decorations and prayers embellished at the entrance are exquisite examples of the Seljuk stoneworking. At the crown gate, there are geometric and flowery designs adorning the two prayers out of the Holy Quran. Mosque of the Mosque School has collapsed, only its minaret is still standing. The theological school is open to the visits of history lovers today as a museum of stone and woodworking. Only one corner of Aladdin Mosque today, whispering memories of eight centuries ago, stands under its concrete umbrella shelter. Konya is an important center for hand weaving. The mending of very valuable carpets is made in Konya.
every knot and every loop the young weavers do are a token of their attachment to the past. It is as if every loop and knot tied in the traditional Anatolian and Seljuk designs will convey the Anatolian culture a thousand colors are woven to the future generations and bound tightly with thread dipped in root dye. The spoon which was brought over to Anatolia by the immigrant Turks from Central Asia can be found in various styles and forms in the bazaar called the small Vidistim in Konya. Konya is famous for its spoons. The owner of the spoon store is rather sad, but he repeats an old Turkish saying, he who gives up or forsakes eating rice should have his spoon broken, which means that he will go on selling spoons even if he doesn't earn much. Konya is famous for its spoons, and this is also evident by the famous tune of the spoons, a countrywide known folk dance. Women's Bazaar, one of the oldest two markets in Konya. It's a place where the lady farmers can sell their agricultural products without any mediators. This market, which may be the first one of its kind in the world, opens up every morning to sell the precious vegetables, grains and fruits to the people of Konya. The products sold here are mostly grown in small farms or the backyards of houses. This market can be visited for the sake of viewing the products and the lady farmers who have so skillfully administered their market for many years. Konya has an effective rail transportation system which saved the city from traffic problems. As in many other modern cities, the trams conveniently transport the inhabitants all over the city in the shortest and cheapest way. Maybe it was due to this reason that Konya was chosen the best governed city in Japan and was also named the world's eighth best organized city during the Second United Nations Human Settlements Conference, Habitat II. If a person wants to be able to touch history during his life, that person should visit Konya. He should climb to the top of the hill of Aladdin, lean against the embellished marble columns of Aladdin's mosque, then stroll down the hill to the rock crystal theological school to study its tiles and then survey the beauty of the stone carvings of Saleh Atta. It is said that Tanya catches a person like malaria overtaking from all four sides and carries him over to its own world or like a stranger stays aloof at a distance. Tanya is a touchstone with its physical and spiritual dimensions in the Anatolian railroad adventure.